Hey there, Ramble Force. Chris Gamble here from the Digital Ramble again. It's another episode. Joined as always by my co-host in Houston, Texas, JJ Cannon. What's happening, Gamble? How are you, buddy? Hey, JJ. Good to see you on a, a Monday recording. We do this every week. It's, uh, it gets our week kicked off in style. Oh, yeah, absolutely, man. I, I had a fantastic weekend, just busy, busy with the family. You know, it's the uh, start of the school year for us, and so the kids right. are, we had some reading assignments that we're still trying to get done, but, you know, my kids are all about volleyball, and volleyball is like ugh, crazy. It's, it's ridiculous. How about you, man? What would you do this weekend? I've probably still got some reading assignments from school and in, in back in the nineties. <laughs> I never finished. I never finished those. I better, I better check my school bag. Yeah, I um, think about it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, this weekend, our family's been preparing for a big wedding that's happening. So my brother-in-law is getting married. He's the last one to be to be paired off, and uh, a bit of an unusual venue for the wedding. So they're doing it at, at home, but the the after wedding soiree is going to be part of it's going to be held in my barn that i own um my, my wife and i own this old barn that we'd love to one day convert into a home but at the moment it's a bit of a, a dumping ground but we've converted it into a rustic bar i've done some some cool lighting and and hooked it up with the audio system this weekend Ooh, i bet you that's going to be really special environment for them to celebrate in yeah, it's going to be fun. It's, uh, it's, it's low key, you know, about 100 people going. Uh, it's going to be really, really fun. Uh, you know, summer wedding in, in East Anglia is always, always good fun. Well, cool, man. We're, we're going to have to check out your social. Are you going to post some pictures about that by chance? You know, what kind of tech you dropped in that bar? Okay. Yeah, I think, I think well, I'll take a few pictures and uh, I'll post them on, probably on the Digital Ramble Instagram. All right, cool. I'd, I'd love to see them. So, man, you know, I'm super excited about today. We've been doing this series on, uh, you know, different rooms. What can you do for $3,000? And today, you know, we're extending that. It's part four of, uh, of this season, and uh, it's episode 34. And today it's the smart home, like the essentials to a smart home and like if you're moving into a new house or you're building a new house what are the essentials and what can i get done for three thousand dollars yeah we we talked about this in the pre-show prep and we talked about the the new home needing a, a certain amount of essentials whilst it's being built so we're going to tackle that and we're also going to talk about like a essentials kind of like a starter kit for for your, if you're moving into a new home and you want to set like a good base level of tech with that budget again. So we're not really talking about rooms here. We're talking about uh, tech filling lots of rooms, even with that small budget that we've been talking about for the last three weeks. Yeah, absolutely. What can you do for three grand? So you ready to get in this? Yeah, this is a good one. I'm looking forward to it. All right, let's do it. Hit it up, Mike. Hey, Gamble, you know, like always, I want to say thank you to our Patreons who help support us on a regular basis, uh, who help us get, keep this show going. So thank you, Patreons. And if you'd like to be a contributor of this show as well, check us out at patreon.com forward slash the digital ramble. So, you know, today, I think you're, I think you're starting out with the scenario yourself. So what do you got for, uh, for today for your scenario, Gamble? Okay, so just like the last three parts of this season, we've each been tasked to challenge an area in the home with a reasonable budget, but not a huge amount of cash. So JJ's got $3,000, I've got the UK, UK equivalent, £2,400. And today, I'm going to challenge the new home. With a £2,400 £2, budget, I'm going to prepare a new home with what I believe should be standard in every home, but I'm going to tackle a small family home with a pre-wire and some Wi-Fi as an essential base level uh, for the home. So we work a lot in new construction homes, ranging from 
studio apartments, one bedroom apartments to small family homes like we're going to talk about today, all the way up to the, the biggest home in the street. Okay, so that's something that we've worked in for since day one of our business. You know, it's always been a, an attraction to our industry to work in new construction homes. But what frustrates me a lot is that new homes never, never quite get the wiring they need for technology if we're not involved. So if a home technology provider is not involved, there's a high chance that home is not going to be ready for future technology. So early doors, I've got in early in this project. So small family home, three bedroom house, single story, quite, quite a simple project. I'm going to give the electrician some knowledge. I'm going to share some of my experience and knowledge with him and give him a wiring schedule, a checklist of the cables he needs to install whilst he's doing his electrical wiring. I'm a big fan of the efficiency of one wiring contractor. I believe it's efficient over the overall bill of the house and the budgets that one company should be responsible for the pooling of the cables in. I hate that competition of competing to drill the, the hole in the, in the timber joist or you know, wait until someone else is finished in a room before pulling cables in. So I'm going to give the electrician some space and I'm going to give him a wiring schedule uh, that's going to lay out cables 1 to 50, what cable type, what height, what back box, where it needs to go, where it got to come from. And that, to most of our projects, is a £300 fee, design fee, designing wiring checklist. To guarantee the quality of the cables, I'm also going to deliver to the electrician some cables for the project. So that's going to be three specific cable types, some Category 6 or Cat 6 Ethernet data cable. I'm going to provide some WF100 coaxial cable and some loudspeaker cable, two core speaker cable. We don't need a lot. Remember, it's a small family home. So we're needing about, at the most, 600 meters of CAT6, about 300 meters of coax, and about 100 meters of speaker cable to just provide all the points that are on that checklist, run all the cables. We're not talking about you know, wiring rooms for 7.1.4 audio. We're not talking about having 10 rooms of music and 20 television outlets. We're just talking about each room being provisioned with the right connections for TV, internet, Wi-Fi, uh, and a few points on the on the outside of the building as well. So that materials is coming in just about four hundred pounds for two boxes of Cat Six, a couple of drums of coax cable, and a drum of speaker cable. The electrician's then going to start. He's going to start pulling cables, wiring them in, and for us to ensure that everything's been done correctly, I always factor in a site visit before that drywall or plasterboard goes onto the walls. At that point, I'm kicking off the checklist. I'm double checking his work without putting too much pressure on his shoulders. I'm just making sure the cables are in the right positions and they're all there with the numbers on them and, and they're in the, in the appropriate uh, heights and locations. That's a short visit. That's 150 pounds. You've got to pay it. It's essential. That's the smallest line item in this. Uh, list that I'm reading out today, but it's I think it's the most critical one. How how efficient is that? Because I love that idea gamble of partnering with an electrician, and then we you go back and do your consultation and review. How efficient is that? Because I'm sure some of our listeners are are wondering, like collaborating with an electrician and providing them with a wiring schedule. Have you seen a lot of success in doing it that way? Oh, massively, massively. It's I wouldn't do it any other way. We used to have dedicated people just on site pulling cables, and I, they, they used to hate it. They hated that competition with the electrician and the plumbers to, you know, whose whose turn is it to drill the holes and who's pulling in the cables. Um, it was it was a double spend. I always hated it, it's double labor. Client, you're going to spend you're going to spend money on two teams to run wires. They're just wires, just because our ones are pink and purple and green. Doesn't make them any difference to the to the power cables, really. As long as they're run in the appropriate way, and they they arrive in the location and and the the beginning the the centralized point where all the wires come from, 
one trade, one trade for pooling wires, not the electrician. That's 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 their job. All right. And, and then commitment to the project. Cool. And so now we get into the second fix where our professionalism really starts to starts to matter. Well, this is where this is where we take over. Uh, we understand the electrician then has has a responsibility to do the lights and the power outlets, smoke detectors, connections for appliances, outdoor, indoor work. He's got to do with the electrics. So we take over and do the second fix or what you would call the trim out. Yeah. So that's where we. All those cables that came back to that wiring point that might have been an understairs cupboard or a closet or in a utility room cupboard, we take all that wires and we put them onto a wiring panel. So we present it in a standard way in that RJ45 presentation, which is a standard kind of Ethernet port outlet. We put them on a panel. Yeah. Uh, so if there's 10, 15, 20 cables, there's there's panels with, with that numbering and and, and a space for each cable in the home. We do the same with the coaxial cables, and we do the same with the speaker cables. We present them on a panel in a, in a central point. We also deal with the cables at the, at the, in the rooms. So we put the, the faceplate on, we put the appropriate module that goes in the faceplate, and again, it presents it in a, a universal connection for Ethernet or audio or TV you know, for satellite or, or aerial services. So materials and labor, 300 pounds worth of materials, 500 pounds worth of labor to deal with that second fix. From that point, I always say to customers, from that point onwards, you could tell us to disappear, hit the road, you're done. Because from that point, I feel like I've prepared that building with a wiring infrastructure that's ready for anything to be connected to it. And I say to clients, if money's tight and budgets are getting drained in, in other directions, Pull the plug on the tech. At least you prepared the building. And we'll talk about this later when we do the gamble ramble slash cannon fire that we've got lined up for today. It is doubling it up today. Go ahead. Yeah. On. So at that point, you've prepared the home with a wiring infrastructure, and you've spent. You've not even spent two thousand pounds. You've not. I think adding it up at this stage, we're about seventeen hundred pounds. Which is, I think, it's a small it's a small change when you. A new construction build might be, for a house this size, might be £170,000, £150,000. You're talking about a small slice, a small percentage of the of the overall cost. I'm going to go one step further because I've got £2,400 to spend, and I'm going to put some equipment in, and I think it's the only essential equipment, the only essential equipment that every house should have, and that's a good Wi-Fi system, a wired Wi-Fi system. So in that pre-wire and all the cables, we put in cables in the right locations to install wireless access points. So ceiling mounted access points that will go in two positions in the home. We also pre-wired for an external Wi-Fi connection, an outdoor access point, because I believe that there shouldn't be a disconnect when you go into the garden. You should have equally as good Wi-Fi at the bottom of your garden because that's a part of your home. It's where you're going to spend a lot of time when the, when the sun's shining. So outdoor Wi-Fi, indoor Wi-Fi, a network switch to power these devices and give them the connection they need, a third-party router so you're not tied to your internet service provider's router. It's your router, your equipment, you manage it, and a wireless controller to talk to these products, handle the traffic and the devices on the network. I've gone for the Unify brand here, big fan of Unify, a good price point, and we're going to install all this two internal access points, one external, an eight-port switch, a router, and the wireless controller. We're going to set that up for £850. We have wired the home. It's been designed. It's been supervised, managed, documented, and we're giving you a whole house Wi-Fi system, £2,450. I'm £50 over. I might be generous and give you a £50 discount if you make me a cup of coffee. There you go. Wow. Wow, Gamble. That's that's a that's quite a bit of service knowledge for quite a bang of pounds, man. That's that, that's, that's what pretty- we do on the regular though. This is the base level we give homes regularly. When we're involved, you, you know you're going to get some good wiring in place and you're going to get good Wi-Fi. 
Yeah, I mean, and and I have it in mind as well. I'm a little bit different than yours. I mean, you're discussing the pre-wire. I think a pre-wire on a pre-wire is a little redundant, but we're very uniform in the in the same type of structure, where we're bringing everything. We call it the home run panel, and we're bringing sure. all of our Cat fives and our networks into the home run panel that allows us to distribute it uh, appropriately throughout the house, whether it needs to be for uh, control or for network or for data, you know, whenever those cat sixes are ran, uh, or RG six, are we using it for a signal feed for a satellite or cable box? Are we using it for an audio return or, you know, there's a variety of different ways that you can use some of the wires in the pre-wire to manipulate them, to do what you want them to do. I mean, that's a good reason to have a professional in from the start so that it can be designed appropriately to make sure that you have the right wires in place so you can have some flexibility in how that system is designed and, and expanded upon. I love it. I like it, man. That, that's a heck of a deal, brother. JJ, if there was a little bit more budget, um, we're big fans of cables that make it really efficient when the electrician's running those cables. So it's a, a bundled cable, yeah. slightly thicker, but inside it, it has two cat six, one cat five, and two coaxial cables in one bundled sheath, a single pool to your TV outlet in the room, one pool, you know, one, one bit of labor per room. And that cable is quite pricey, so I was conscious of budget there. But when we can, we typically use that type of cable uh, for efficiency. Yeah, it's like a Siamese cable for us. I mean, it has more than two in there. But, yeah, yeah. talk about efficiency. And, and having a little bit of everything that you need, two Cat 6s, a Cat 5, and two RG6s, I mean, yeah. that, that pretty much covers the gamut of everything you need. Plus, they're all individually colored as well. So it's, uh, it's kind of a uh, – uh, it's easy to, to interpret as well as uh, assign a color to a particular purpose, whether it's network or IR or however you want to manipulate those wires to, to do what you want to do with them. Okay, JJ. So we've got your challenge next, the new American home. You've got the $3,000 budget. Let us share with us what you've got this week. You know, I, I have something a little bit similar, but, you know, a lot of builders will come to us or new homeowners will come to us, and they want like a kit price, you know, and, and it's something that we've put together. They love that kit price, like all in give me, you know, all my essentials. And, and what I've seen, one of our favorite kits that our clients like is, is a security kit. You know, whenever they're moving into the house, they want to, uh, you know, be protected from, from the get-go. And sometimes entertainment is, is more of a luxury rather than a necessity. And so I've put together, you know, kind of that new American, either it's a remodel, people are repurposing a, a, an older home, or they're, they're new builds and they're moving into the home for the first time. And this kind of works for a variety of different sizes of homes. But we're going to be looking at more like a three-bedroom, four-bedroom house, which is pretty standard of a home size for ours. It, it reaches that median market of, of average clientele, whether regardless of what part of town you're in, you know, that three to four bedroom home. And, you know, like you said, and like Gamble, we've said for, for the past year, the foundation of everything we do is based on the network. And so Wi-Fi is crucial uh, for the solutions that, that we use and, and for the, the family to communicate so they can do Wi-Fi calling because a lot of these homes are built extremely well with double pane windows or you got uh, blown in or foamed in insulation uh, on the roof and, and having that traditional data cellular service is challenging and so they're using Wi-Fi calling. And so having a good wireless solution in, in the home is crucial. Our go-to here uh, for Digital Delight is Eero. We have, man, I, I was talking to Eero Corporate uh, last week. I think maybe I might have had, out of thousands of Eros that we've uh, deployed, I think I might have had one issue, and it was a power supply. It was not the unit itself. It, it was the power supply. Talk about reliability and, and the pass-through speeds. Eero is a fantastic product. Wi-Fi for, is, is our go-to. Our next is, and so we want to establish that network and, and establish that Wi-Fi signal throughout the house. 
uh, inside the home as well as as out in the on the patio. Y'all have gardens. We got swimming pools down here in in the south. And you know, whenever you're chilling on the back patio, you're grilling, or you're in the pool, or even mowing the yard, you want to have good Wi-Fi connection. And so, yes, inside as well as outside, just like you guys over there in the UK. Next up for us is security. You know, and and that Nest Hello man is is just a uh, is just a fantastic item for your doorbell, uh, and you can set up zones. Uh, you can; it's very easy to search through your different zones, whether it's a, a, a talking or if it's somebody that's actual motion and a, and a person that is triggering. You know, it's it's recording, so it's very easy to search. Uh, as well as it has that um, uh, timeless. Uh, you know, it it's recording all the time. You know that that I don't want to make it sound creepy, but you don't lose any record time. Uh, there's no delay in recording that you might find with with other doorbell uh, intercom products that that might be on the market. That's why we've really gravitated towards that Nest Hello. Also, we like the Nest Protect. You know, and Nest Protect is uh, like your fire sensors uh, for inside the house. And so, um, and the reason, in most homes, they all have the fire sensors, but but they're hardwired, and you have to be home to know that there's something going on. What if you're not at the house, and maybe the kids are at the house, and you got to wait for them to call? But if you have the Nest Protect, then you know you get an alert immediately, and then you can also integrate it with other devices in your homes to even. Um, elevate your sense you know your security there there at your home and we'll get into that here in a second um and so we got that nest hello from the front door we got that nest protect i also like some nest cameras outside you know uh, we have enough budget here to where we can get some nest uh nest outdoor cameras so if you want to put something on the on the backyard at the pool you know to see what's going on uh when you're not at the house uh, liability or maybe something along where your utilities are on the side of the house where your air condition units are or your main power shut off is on the house you can very simply uh, install and set up an, a nest camera outdoor along the side I have one in here so I've got the um, and I, I didn't go through pricing like like you have and I'll, I'll come back through excuse me I'll come back through my pricing here as as I go through this gamble okay here at the end and so I've got the Wi-Fi, I got the Nest Hello, I got some Nest uh, Protects, I got the Nest Outdoor Camera. Now I'm moving on to lights, you know. And sometimes people use the um, motion detection lights or you know the solar panel lights. And the problem with those guys is it wears out, you know. Uh, and and it inevitably those floodlights that have the motion sensors built in or that have the photo cells built in, they wear out. And, and it's, it's frustrating. And so what kind of protection is that long term? It, it's not. And so we really enjoy and uh, encourage our clients to look at lighting control. And Lutron is, is a solid lighting control package. That's probably one of my most, uh, uh, you know, out of this entire package, the lighting control the startup kit because you also had the bridge you know uh the and the the main repeater rather than the bridge but the main repeater is the bridge that allows you to access it via your mobile device whether it's uh, your cell phone or a tablet but you can set up schedules gamble and so every night at sunset these lights on the exterior of your house turn on and so that could be the front porch or it could be the back patio it could be your floodlights on the on this perimeter of your of your home or maybe uh some people might you know be familiar with like lights on the garage but you never want to come to your home and it be dark um you want to give security uh, that that when I drive up at my house at night that that it's illuminated. You can also set it up to to an away mode to where it simulates that you're at home and it kind of turns the lights on and off for you. It's it's phantom, you know. It's like a phantom uh, human inside the house turning lights on and off. So if somebody's maybe monitoring your house, it looks like somebody is actually at the house. Um, and then for me, irrigation down here in the south and a lot of these. Um, you know, um, states that are down low, irrigation 
in our yards. We a lot of people invest heavily in their yards, and that's an investment uh, and something that they want to keep uh, protected as well. So you know, again, Ratio is one of our top go-to smart devices for uh, for uh, protecting your house and a starter kit for the entire house. So. Those are, and and you can do either eight zones. The one that I have in here is eight zones. That's what we're seeing our most common. But Rachio also has one that you can do up to 16 zones if you if you need to do that. What you got? You, you've got a lot of tech here. I'm, I'm sweating a bit here. You've got a <laughs> lot of tech. Let, let's go through the prices, JJ. All right, pricing. So, Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi system. Yeah, it, well, our Wi-Fi system is the Eero with two beacons, and these beacons can plug into an electrical outlet, 259 Nest Hello for your front doorbell, two twenty nine. Two of the Nest Protects, two hundred thirty eight dollars. We got the Nest Camera Outdoor. I have one on here because you got the front door. Let's put another one in the back, one hundred ninety nine yeah. bucks. Our big hitter is that Lutron Starter Kit because you got to get that main repeater, and you only need to buy one of them one time. But that guy comes in at five ninety nine. Uh, for for that starter kit, and then the Ratio irrigation is two hundred twenty seven dollars. So pretty much the entire kitten caboodle and labor for us, it'll probably take us an entire day to put it all in. You know, so that's installation, that's programming, as well as setting up some voice control, so you can do some voice control with your lights or with your irrigation or even with your Nest uh, Nest products. You can do voice control all in gamble. I'm at twenty nine fifty one. Why? Twenty nine <laughs> fifty one, all in. Well, that's that's such a such a smart starter kit. You've got so many smart products there. But what I like about it is it's practical smart home. It's safety. It's security. It's uh, you know irrigation of your your lawn. It's it's Wi Fi for your for your devices. There's nothing fancy about this I, a lot of these are the they are the essentials and this was the point of today's episodes was that homes need some essential smart home tech today yeah you know one thing that i could have done here gamble and i might and i might do is instead of having two of the nest protects maybe put in a nest thermostat you know in there yeah. you know and, and do that as well and and now we got our climate under control just depending yeah, on how many units is, you get. Is, this is the be- this is the beauty. You, you can easily now expand. You've set a kind of precedent of the ecosystems of products you're going to work with. You know, grow your Nest system with more cameras, thermostats, smoke detectors. Grow if you need your Wi-Fi to expand. You can add more beacons and grow your lighting system if if you wish. You know, because Lutron hundreds you know hundreds of device mm-hmm. capacity. Um, you know, you can add room by room then after you've done your exterior light. And, and Gamble, with this, if they're wired correctly, like what you discussed, if you're wired yeah. correctly, if you have a good network as your foundation, it's completely expandable. It's not all in or nothing. It's like what resources, and I think that's what's so cool about this whole $3,000 challenge that we've been doing in, in this series is like, a lot of people have restrictive budgets and what can I do when I can do it? You know, and when mama says, Hey, Hey honey, I got three grand. You can throw out some tech. This gets your mind percolating on what I can do. But really gamble, you got to start with this, the foundation of the wiring, the foundation of the network in order to grow, you know, it's, it's gotta be solid from the start. And really, you need a home technology professional to do that because a lot of times, um, you know, builders are good at building, electricians are good at running wire, but if they don't have the understanding, then it it's it's it won't happen correctly for you. I, I see a lot of pain out there, Gamble, whenever that foundation yeah. is not set up correctly. Well, listen, we're, we're running up on our time today, um, but we do want to just throw a quick message out there with a combined Gamble Ramble cannon fire. And then then we'll close out the show. Go ahead on. So we talked about the preparation of all these wires. We talked about the tech that could go into the home. Uh, But myself and JJ feel so strongly about this. Homes, both in the UK, the US, I'm sure every other country, our listeners all over the the world will agree, 
homes are not being prepared with the right wiring for technology. Both JJ and I feel this is a new home scandal. We don't feel that homes are being prepared for the tech that people are moving in with. They're wanting to connect smart TVs. They're wanting to have good Wi-Fi for their phones, tablets, games consoles. They're wanting enhanced security that gives them alerts to their phone when they're in the park, at work, on holiday. They want to know if there's flood, smoke, moisture, motion. The new homes currently are so underserviced for technology that we're going to go in a long campaign about this digital ramble over the next 500 episodes. I don't care if it takes that long. We are committed to changing the way that, that homes are being built and prepared for technology. Yeah, and a lot of the times, Gamble, in the past, it, it used to be quite the investment in order to prepare a home. You know, and a lot of people bought into into that because in the past it, it was necessary. Uh, and I think uh, a lot of um, uh, challenges arose from that over-preparation. And uh, that's where I think some of that scandal might might lie because sometimes the builders are saying, look, we don't need it. And in reality, yeah, yeah man, uh, you do need it. it. It is a necessity, but there's there's the correct way of going at it, and a lot of it is is planning, understanding the education aspect of it, and then finding a home tech professional that that can help you, uh, guide you in in the right direction. Yeah, I think I think there historically has been a, a problem with our industry has had some friction with builders that we always want to keep adding more stuff, more, let's, let's add this, let's add that. Let's, what we should be just providing is a wiring infrastructure for every home and walking out. That's it. We've done our job. We've prepared it. Call us when you need us for the tech. We're, we're just obsessed with trying to sell all these boxes uh, and filling up this wiring enclosure and plugging in every cable we can, but that's not the point. We're supposed to be preparing homes for the future. Uh, and, and that's a, an issue our industry has. So we'll continue this conversation. That was part four, season five. We've got one more part of, of season five, and that's our wrap up of all the spaces that we challenged. And we'll talk about the joining up of this tech and, and the way that you can control your smart spaces that you've spent this money on. Uh, and after that, we're in the run up then to the, to the expo in Denver. We're really excited about that. So JJ, it's been a great show this week. Man, it's been fantastic, Gamble. Gosh, man, it goes by so quickly. You know, uh, I think we're going to start on a new uh, new season next week. No, season five, part five next week is the wrap up of all the smart spaces and, uh, that's and right. how that's you right. can control how you can control them all. I'm just too excited uh, about getting into our next one. I mean, next next week. Don't get me wrong; it's going to be fire. But then after that, we're going to start getting into this expo. Man, I'm so fired up about that. It's going to be a lot of fun. Cool. Any questions for the show, get in touch. JJ. Yeah, that's it. That's, that's the action. <laughs> drop us drop us a note in the DM. Hit us up in the Facebook. Check us out on YouTube. 11 different podcast channels that you can find the digital ramble on. Until next week, friends, y'all have a great week. Every month, the Digital Ramble will receive a regular source of income from supporters who've pledged through Patreon. For as little as a dollar a month, having your ongoing support means we spend less time thinking about business and more time creating quality content for you. Customized, based in Norfolk, England, are proud sponsors of the Digital Ramble. Check out our all set up services. It's smart home installation with ease customize.uk.com If you're looking to make your basic home smart, check out digitaldelight.com forward slash shop where they have a variety of different smart home technology solutions that help make smart home shopping easy for you. Check out digitaldelight.com forward slash shop.